Thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Verdict. On today's episode, we will be discussing our top three favorite films of 2017. Stay tuned to see our thoughts on last year's film right after this. Hello, movie lovers. Welcome to The Verdict. I'm Devontae Banks. I'm Patrick Jimenez. And I'm Tristan R. Sarder. Let's start this episode by talking about a film named The Promise. It was a film that was slightly overlooked, but had an amazing story to tell with great direction, performances, and score. Let's take a look at the trailer for The Promise. about Constantinople. It can be magical. In the Grand Bazaar, you could buy the finest fashions from Paris and London, the latest automobiles from America. It can be horrible, too, just like any great city. Were you happy there? It was a different life. A toast to old friends and new. Christopher Myers. Chris is a star reporter for the Associated Press. May I introduce Mademoiselle Anna Kassari? You're going to become a doctor. I hear a French accent. I lived in Paris for many years, but I'm a proud Armenian. Michael, you make me feel I've come home. These Germans want your sultan to declare a... Holy war! Oh my god, what was that? It's very dangerous for Armenians right now. This is our opportunity. We will restore the great Ottoman Empire. We cannot be here. We must leave. What is the Associated Press doing here, Mr. Myers? Uh, reporting on the war. There is no war here. Merely the evacuation of the civilian population to a safer region. You are using this so-called relocation as a cover. You trust no one. I have to get us out of here before there's no time left. He wants us to help his family escape. We have to help them. I'm a witness to history. How wonderful it must be to go back to the comfort of your American home and write about it. We will make a stand, but we'll fight them from every rock. Our revenge will be to survive. Promise was directed by Terry George and stars Oscar Isaac, Charlotte Laban, and Christian Bale. For me, it was a deeply moving film uh, and left a far lasting impact on me. It was my number three on the, my, my list. So I really liked it because it was an overlooked film and because it was something that was really important that they've been trying to get out to make. And the producer actually forked out $90 million to make this movie. And I remember seeing it in Nashville and it was in Opry Mills and we went inside and we went to the box office and she looked at us and she said, you guys are the only people in this theater. And it was a massive, you know, massive uh, stadium. And it was just kind of, it's kind of sad because when you watch it, yeah, there was elements of like, okay, there's a love triangle, but it's not forced. But it's, uh, it's a part of history that even the government that was, you know, the Turkish government at the time is still denying to this day. So I think, I mean, it wasn't the best film ever, but I've put it in my top just because it needed to be addressed and needed to be, and more people need to know about it. So it's like the cultural impact that it should have had versus yeah. the one that it had. It's I, like I, I, I definitely see that right there. There's a lot of films like that that you know they're 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 well-produced films. They may not be the best films in the world, but their cultural impact should be so much more than it is. And they say something to you, which yeah. I think is the most important part. Yeah. Yeah, Tristan, what was your number three film? Uh, my number three film was Kingsman: The Golden Circle. 
Uh, I, I enjoy the the Kingsman movies. I think they're they're pretty good for what they are. They're fun. I you know I like dressing up, so it's kind of cool to get fashion advice in an action film. <laughs> um, it, as far as like film though, it I wouldn't de I definitely wouldn't say it wasn't the best. That's why it's not number one. It was fun. It wasn't as good as the first one, but it was entertaining and it had interesting. You know, it had interesting moments, which I guess what you go to those movies to see. Yeah, exactly. be entertained. Yeah, and seeing Elton John swear and kick someone in the face. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> it's always hilarious. I haven't yeah. seen it. I, I really liked the first one. I get to see the second one. Oh, it was really awesome. Yeah, I it's yeah. it's kind of one of those sequels that knows the first one was successful, so they take a few more liberties. I feel like. Gotcha. That's good. Yeah, yeah. check that one out. Where were you? Me? It was definitely Ingrid Goes West. I don't know if you guys have heard about it, but Ingrid Goes West, it was this very weird film, but it's great. It's basically about this girl uh, who's obsessed with social media, right? Played by Aubrey Plaza. So uh, she gets so obsessed, this one girl, she's, you know, she's kind of popular, likes her like thing on Instagram, she lives across the country. She takes like money, because her mom died recently, takes all the money she has in the world, moves to LA, and she's like, I'm gonna be this girl's best friend, and I'm gonna become a social media star. And from there, the entire thing devolves. She has a landlord who's very attractive, but obsessed with Batman. <laughs> so a good guy. Yeah. 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 yeah, actually he is. He's the best character in the movie. He's like the <laughs> nicest person. Like, couldn't be nicer. And uh, the per woman she wants to be friends with may not be all she thinks she is. Yeah. I remember it had a really cool poster. I really, oh, yeah, I really yeah, like that. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see that coming back and like posters that kind of more like 70s, early like, 80s kind of aesthetic style of, yeah, like of poster. Like almost the uh, heightened reality look, like it looks like a painting, but it looks real. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, I haven't seen I know, uh, isn't Ice Cube Sun in that movie too? Oh yeah, he okay. plays the Batman fan. Oh, Ooh, Every gotcha. line of dialogue is a reference to Batman. <laughs> so, like, there's literally a line of dialogue where he's talking to Aubrey Plaza. He goes, you're supposed to be Catwoman, but you had to like Two-Face. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, this, uh, it was really hard to like kind of construct like top three movies because I think there was a lot of good movies last year like the ones that I was thinking about putting in um, it was kind of hard because just because of relevance I know there was a lot that I was like I could I need to put this one in here this one in here but it just ended up just being about what movies if somebody was like what was good last year and I would just hand it to him. Yeah. I, I honestly want to add Free Fire to my top list but nobody saw Free Fire so oh, it was yeah. like like which one didn't make your list like which one was right what was number four what was going to be right on the yeah. cusp what was the honorable mention I guess you could say Man, uh, there were so many great films, but I guess the honorable mention, it'll probably be Kingsman 2, to be honest. Because, I mean, like, I mean, he knows I love those movies. I also love Dress and Fancy. But even beyond that, I love the message of the Kingsman movies. Like, I love the message of trying to make people more like gentlemen. And But I love that, like, you can still keep your roguish nature about you, too. Uh, there were so many great musical cues in the movie. It was so well directed by Matthew Vaughn. And there was one scene that is set to Take Me Home Country Road that if you don't swell up, you don't get a little tear at that scene, you are dead inside. <laughs> what about you? You're fourth. If you, the one I didn't make. Like I said, my, my, my honorable mention would be Free Fire just because, one, I'm a huge Charlotte Copley fan. Uh, I love the aesthetic of the 70s, and it's just, it's Breakfast Club as a shootout, basically. And it's just, it's such a fun film. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I was going to, I was going to put Disaster Artist on there just because I'm a huge fan of The Room. And uh, I've watched that movie more than any movie I've ever seen in my life. And I used to watch Dumb and Dumber, but I think The Room has surpassed it. And this is nice. <laughs> To add to the mythology of Tommy Wiseau, I mean, I know stuff going on with James Franco, um, but as an artist and what he made, it was pretty incredible. I thought it was, not only did you see this character, Tommy Wiseau, but you see him as a person, you empathize with him, you see where he's coming from, you get mad at him because he is a person, but that was my number four. I wanted to put it on there, but because James Franco did what he did, I had to take it off. So. Yeah, was it tearing you apart? Yeah, it was. It was, really was. <laughs> oh, man, we're going to do a whole show on that one. But, uh, but yeah, I, th I think that was a few of the movies. that It was a really good movie, a yeah, really good year for film, I think. I mean, there's a lot of bad ones. You know? Oh, yeah, so oh, yeah. many. I think the worst movie of last year had to be Gods of Egypt. Oh, I don't know was, if you guys seen it. Oh, yeah, it was. I mean, I don't oh. think anybody's seen it for good reason because it was that bad. I remember there was one guy falling asleep in the back and snoring really loud. That was funnier than the movie. And, uh, but, yeah. I don't know, the snowman left me with scars. I was about to, no, my, my, my fiance fell asleep. She's like, wake me up when it's over. And she fell asleep, so. But go ahead. Well, that was an interesting discussion. On to our number three. Picking left to move on to, what? This film. There's not only one capable of producing most profitable you films in 2017, a stellar director, shit. debut, and commentary on modern day racism in it. Do you have your cozy clothes? Got that. What? 
Do they know I'm black? Should they? You might wanna, you know. Mom and dad, my black boyfriend will be coming up this weekend. I just don't want you to be shocked that he's a black man. <laughs> I ain't never seen you like this before, bro. Meeting family and taking road trips. Don't come back all bougie, man. Come back, get your damn pants up to your damn stomach. <laughs> <laughs>
and it was just all around like there was no point in this movie where I was bored or where I was frustrated by the film or anything like that and as for Jordan Peele's first film I think it's an incredible way for him to make his mark in cinema oh yeah now how'd you feel about all the interesting Easter eggs in the movie like uh, I don't know if you noticed this but um, a bunch of the uh, different characters who are black in the movie uh, who have already been taken to the second place they all wear hats to hide oh, yeah, to hide the scars. Yeah, I heard like that. that. And then in the beginning when he's walking, he says, oh, we have some black mold downstairs as they're creating black molds. Yeah. <laughs> Which I was like, oh, this, oh, yeah. this it's, it's definitely a movie you're going to have to see twice. Yeah, because the first times. time you see it, you kind of like, remember when I saw it, I saw it in theaters, so that was a really cool experience. And I remember just not knowing where it was going to go. And you're like, okay, I see that kind of, like when she, the first scene where she pushes the cop away, that was like leaving no traces. You yeah. know, when, I, when you first see it, you're like, oh, she's trying to be nice, whatever. But in all reality, she was just shooing the cop away because they were about to do what they were going to do. It's really terrifying. Every, di- every bit of dialogue, the second time you watch it and the third time, like it gets like even creepier. Yeah. Like that was a really... And then they, his friend was awesome because he was the audience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really, was possibly the best friend in cinema history. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That was really good. Yeah, Get Out was definitely... And it's nominated, isn't it? Like, oh, yeah. For like, was it Best Director, Best Picture... Best, Best visual screenplay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, he's killing it, man. Yeah, well, it was, what? Uh, yeah. Uh, with, like, especially with his relationship with his girlfriend and everything, it was, and as someone who's like, see, I've seen a ton of movies, I, I figured I could see where it was going, but in all honesty, it was a while before I was like, okay, she's with them. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It was like, I was really going back and forth, and I think if a director can do that to even someone who's seen a lot of movies and who can be very critical of that, that's the sign of some good original material coming to the table. Oh, yeah. And one of the things I like about Get Out is I feel like that movie is a master class because there's no such thing as small performances. Like, because there's certain people who show up in characters to where they have an amazing debut. The friend Andre, in my personal opinion, the actor who played him is great. Which, by the way, if you ever see FX's Atlanta, please watch it because that actor is all over that show. <laughs> now, did you guys check out Logan Lucky? Logan, no, seen. that's the one. Yeah, I saw it. I saw the trailers for it, and I was like, that looks kind of interesting because Daniel Craig looks crazy. But I, no, I didn't get a chance to see it now. Unfortunately, I haven't checked it out. It's on my list, though. It is definitely on my queue. Oh, yeah, it was really fun. Now, I don't know if I've heard your uh, take on Blade Runner 2049. I, like I said, I, I agree with him. The cinematography is beautiful. I wasn't totally blown away by the actual plot, but as far as, like, the aesthetic of everything, it's kind of like, you know, with Ridley Scott. You know, he may not have directed, but it's kind of that gravity of that fantastic... This, the scale and scope of it, same thing with, you know, the new Prometheus movies, you know, the, the plot may not be the best thing, but the size and scale and the aesthetic of everything is just remarkable yeah. to the point where oh. you kind of overlook a simple plot mm-hmm. to really enjoy just the beauty of everything you're watching. Because they're visual storytellers, too. That's what people mm-hmm. tend to, there's two different types of filmmaking. You know, there's a very, like, interwoven story along with the visuals, but, like, Ridley Scott will take something that's just, here's a crew or here's, you know, whatever, here's a man stranded on Mars. Like, whatever he does, it, like, the way he presents the world, like, it literally just brings you in. And I, I am so upset I didn't get to see Blade Runner in theaters because visually that was, and it wasn't in an IMAX. Oh, yeah. yeah. Such a shame. Because it destroyed me and my girlfriend's ears. <laughs> like, 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 you guys saw Hone Zimmer score? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, I saw Dunkirk, too. Yeah, that one also destroyed my ears, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but, yeah, I'd say Get Out was definitely one of the better films of the year. I was still need to see. Is Logan Lucky? Oh yeah. Okay, I keep wanting to call it Lucky Logan, and then Blade Runner twenty forty nine. Those are second. Oh yeah. Well, after the break, we'll talk about our number one picks of the year. Are you prepared for life outside of college? Probably not yet. Austin Peay's Career Services is there to help you transition to post-grad life. I've had some friends use Career Services, but I've never used it myself. Whether you need assistance finding a major or preparing for your future career. This free service has all of the tools to guide you. We try to equip students and alumni um, with the tools that they need to go through that job searching process. They built their resume and it gave like complete relief off of me because I was able to be able to walk out of there and be confident in my next interview. The entire reason of going to college is so that you can actually get a job. So those resources that are available to you in career services are second to none on campus. It's the best place to go to. Stop by room 210 in the Morgan University Center or visit www.apsu.edu slash careers. Take the first step into your future today.
Now, Edgar Wright is one of the most exceptional filmmakers of all time, even at this point. And time and time again, he has proven that he can take audiences on a magical journey. And with my favorite film of the year, Baby Driver, he did that once again. Take a look at the trailer and see for yourself. So you're just starting your day, or did you just get off? They call, I go, you know. So what is it you do? I'm a driver. Oh, like a chauffeur. Anyone I'd know? I hope not. What is your name? Baby. Your name's Baby. B-A-B-Y, Baby. It's one you say listen to the music all the time. Is he uh, mental? Mental meaning slow. Was he slow? No. He had an accident when he was a kid. Still has a hum in the drum. Plays music to drown it out. And that's what makes him the best. Whoa, 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 whoa. One more job and I'm done. One more job and we're straight. Now, I don't think I need to give you the speech about what happens when you say no, how I can break your legs and kill everyone you love, because you already know that, don't you? Yeah. The moment you catch feelings is the moment you catch a bullet. And your uh, waitress girlfriend, she's cute. Let's keep it that way. I want us to head west and never stop. You in? I'm in, baby. Blood on your hands. Time to face the music. Baby, we need to get out of here. I have to end this. Are we in bed together now? Baby. 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 Doc said Michael Myers. This is Mike Myers. It should be the Halloween mask. This is a Halloween mask. No, the killer dude from Halloween. Oh, you mean Jason. No. Baby, you tell me who does. She a good girl, you love her? Yes, I do. That's too bad. I adored this film's use of music, violence, and dance to truly give me an experience I have never felt before. And that is why it is my number one film. But why are you guys number one films, your number one films? Well, for me, uh, you mentioned Lucky Logan, Logan Lucky, and I, I, my favorite was about the unluckiest Logan you could possibly think of, the movie Logan. It was, for me, it was just one of the most original superhero movies. You know, we had Deadpool, an original kind of R-rated, harder superhero movie, and then we had this, which was a much more dramatic take on the, how an R-rated superhero film could do. And the, in, the entire film, I was just blown away by how well this tied basically all of X-Men up into a nice bow. A very gritty bow, but a nice bow nonetheless. <laughs> yeah, Logan was really good too. I really liked. It. I remember seeing it in. It was a D box theater, which pretty much is like you sit in these chairs. I saw it in Vegas, and you sit in these chairs, and the chair moves with the camera as it pans, really? and then if something punches, like the seat shakes, and it was really cool. That was a uh, yeah. Logan was so good, but it's so sad. <laughs> Such a sad movie, you know, but it was really good. Yeah, I was a yeah. fan of uh, Leon the Professional. It felt a lot like, if you've ever seen that one. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah. It, it felt very much. I was Never at the end, I was like. That. A great Natalie Portman well, it was, film. Yeah. <laughs> 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 well, what, Patrick, what was your favorite movie? My favorite <laughs> film of the year was uh, War for the Planet of the Apes. That was one of the, for me, five minutes into the movie, I leaned over and I was like, can I say that this is an amazing movie? Because it was, there was cinematography, uh, Matt Reeves is another visual storyteller, which he doesn't have to say anything in the first five minutes of the film, and you know exactly what's going on. He pans down to the soldiers who have ape killer on the back of their helmets and extinct, you know, being, and all these other things that let you know where the world's at now. And I really felt the desperation of these are the last bit of humans and these are the apes. And Andy Serkis obviously kills it. And then the really good character in this film, because the film is so heavy with its material and. It's almost like a Western, just like Logan. Mm -hmm. Same kind of premise of getting back, revenge type thing. And, uh, but it was like about family, it was a family film. 
about a you know a, a husband and a father losing those things and him going after who I think Woody Harrelson was a great villain. I thought when he came on screen he was good. Every time he had a dialogue, he stole every scene he was in. It was just nice to see in a technical achievement movie like Planet of the Apes, which people just think is a special effects movie, have such emotional depth. And I I can't tell everybody. A lot of people might think it's because it's called war, it's going to be a war film, which there is elements of. There's a, it starts off with a battle scene, it ends with one, but it's it's a it's a war of ideas, principles, and just what's going to happen next. And it was like Caesar's personal war, and uh, I can't I can't gush over this movie enough. It was I don't know. It was one of the best. It's like I said, the visual effects. It looks like they're real apes. Mm-hmm. Like I was literally blown away. Even now, watching it after you see a film after it's released, and you go back, you're like, I can kind of tell it's CGI. Still can't. Oh yeah. Well, this thing is like I don't even think you could call this a special effects movie because special effects movies don't have this good of special effects. No, like, and I, yeah, and I agree with that. And the cinematography, how he just pushes in and just shows things. It was almost like watching Lord of the Rings, like seeing that in theaters and seeing this. Like what you know, everybody's like, we want a great trilogy. You know, Star Wars is back, but it's got some people divided. And I keep telling people because I feel like that film was overlooked. I think War of Planet of the Apes should have came out in December. It mm-hmm. should have rivaled with The Last Jedi because it was it was a winter film. The whole film took place in winter. Yeah. Like they should have released it in winter instead of the summer so more people could have seen it and appreciated it. You know, because instead of the bombastic sci-fi Star Wars film, you can go see a really in-depth look at humanity. Mm-hmm. And like the good and the bad of it, through apes, which blew my mind. It's a, it's a humanity study through digital characters who are apes. Yeah. Like, I just, I don't know, it's so good. I want to go home and watch it now. <laughs> but yeah, you, uh, yeah, what's Baby Driver? Oh, yeah. Well, one of the things I really love about Baby Driver, I mean, other than just, like, the obvious things of just having great style, was just the amount of detail that is in the movie. Edgar Wright just puts so many things in frame. The frame is always populated with these subtle ideas and characters. Each character is color-coordinated, and they pop. And another great thing about the movie is the movie is very Atlanta-centric. Each and every place they drive in the movie, you can drive those same streets of Atlanta in the same exact way. He mapped out all the chase scenes, all the radio stations that they use in the movie are the actual radio stations. And one of the things I love is this: it just feels like such an experimental film for a studio to make. Same as you guys' films. But that seems like all the time we have for today. Thank you guys for watching our first 2018 episode of The Verdict. It's always a pleasure. And next time we'll see you at the movies. <laughs>